Today, we are going to be railing Matthew Patrick so that my comment section could get upset at me again and be like, Nux, but Matt Pat's not a bad... I know, I love Matt Pat. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Film Theory, uh... the show that ate the devil fruit, giving us the power to ruin your favorite childhood series. Holy shit, he ate a devil fruit and got tentacles? My God. So, as the general audience has started to cool on superheroes, the bigwigs over at Hollywood have been looking for their next big treasure trove of IP they can- Dog, that's not what happened! It's not like people are not interested in superheroes and therefore they picked One Piece. They were working on this One Piece for years! Brother, years! ...plunder and turn into billion dollar hits. And one of the wells Damn. that they've been turned into in recent years, anime. And even though legendary- It's so sad to even compare it, because I really am genuinely- This stream is happening a day before the One Piece live action drops, and I am praying it's fire. I'm hoping it's so good. So even comparing it- Comparing it to all of that garbage is just making me so sad. Classics like Dragon Ball, Ghost in the Shell, and Cowboy Bebop- ah! <laughs> haven't turned out that great, hasn't you know stopped them from trying some more. Feels like every week we hear about a beloved anime getting its own live action adaptation. Yu Yu Hakusho is getting one at Netflix, Gundam's getting the big Bro. screen treatment over at Netflix, Netflix Bro. is trying their hand at My Hero Academia. Oh no! Sword Art Online is making the jump over to Netflix. Wow, that is a lot of Netflix. Sword Art Online has been on Netflix for years. I'm not sure why this is like surprising news. Netflix. Hope it turns out better than Death Note. <laughs> Wait, they're doing another live-action Death Note at Netflix? Okay, so that's a lot. And given Netflix's previous track record, I think it's fair to be a bit nervous. But hey, who knows? Maybe they've figured out a way to course-correct the ship. In fact, we won't have to wait long to see if that's the case, because a few days after this theory airs, they're gonna be dropping their version of a live-action One Piece. I will not lie to you, ladies and gentlemen. I know I'm only a minute into the video, and I'm not allowed to do this, or else people in my chat get upset at me. But I'm just- In case you don't know about this massively popular anime, One Piece is all about the swap buckling Monkey D. Luffy and his ragtag crew of straw hat all right, pirates. All right. Honestly, a better description than than I expected. So this is a dub so far. All searching for the treasure of the last king of the pirates. As the king. Wow, you think it's just treasure? Oh God, you're a normie, a normie. Explain before he died. My fortune is yours for the taking. No way, man. Use the four kids dub. But you'll have to find it first. I left everything I own in one piece. Now, if you thought this was gonna be. A Oh my god, in one place. Oh my god, there's no way. Oh man, oh man. Dude, I, I stand by what I said before. There's no shot Matt had ever read or watched One Piece. And this is definitely a script that someone gave him. Quick adventure. He, he knew that the One Piece live action is coming out. And he was like, damn, I need to get a crank out a video on One Piece pronto. <laughs> Oh, you sweet summer child, you're so wrong. One Piece is one of the world's longest running anime with over a hundred manga volumes. One the longest anime with a hundred manga volumes. Thousand episodes and a quarter century's worth of content with no real signs that they're gonna be stopping anytime soon. There are totally real signs. We are literally in the last saga right now. Oh man. Listen, listen, maybe it's just cause I'm a huge One Piece fan. M maybe that's why it's hurting me so much. Gotta be real here with you, loyal theorists. We've been wanting to cover One Piece on the channel for a long time. Time. There's just so yeah, because it's popular and they basically made a video on every popular franchise Freaking love this man. He's literally the greatest businessman on YouTube Oh much that you have to watch and read to cover your bases watching the anime alone would take you over 17 days straight Man just really went 20 uh, times a thousand <laughs> And easily, I put that in the script. With no sleep and no bathroom breaks. Just from that alone, I was really skeptical when Netflix announced that they were making the show. Why is that a reason to be skeptical? They're, they started from season one. Oh, no. After seeing the trailer? See, if they would have said we're making a movie, then I'd be skeptical. But if they're just adapting the first season into the, an a, a live action, I don't feel like that's too weird. Yeah, I've got some cautious optimism. I'm Monkey D. Luffy. And I'm gonna be king of the pirates! Here's hoping they stick the landing. But with this Netflix Amen, adaptation brother. coming along and Amen. basically asking what if- The One Piece! Oh, the God, One Piece no is way. real! Got this is just like a meme compilation. This isn't even a vi- He didn't even start about One Piece yet. He didn't even start the video. He's a fifth done the video and he didn't start yet. Some cogs turning in my head. Yeah, what if the One Piece were real? And by that I mean- <laughs> What? Wait. We don't even know what the One Piece is! <laughs> Saying, bro, what are you doing? What if the world of One Piece were real? This okay, you really read way too deep into that meme, homie. 
is a franchise with an incredibly unique setup in a world that is instantly recognizable. So what would happen if we applied real world science to it? That's right, friends, we're doing a certified theorist classic today. If yeah. this thing were real, it would be absolutely terrifying. Because make no mistake, it's the fantasy world. It's like saying every fantasy world is broken. The world of Game of Thrones is broken. Can you imagine if there was a horde of white immortal zombies coming down from the from the North Pole? Dude, we have a hard enough time with white people below the wall. Imagine white people above the wall too, and they can't die. If the world of One Piece were real, it would be dangerous, disastrous, and it yeah. would ruin basically any attempt to better your life. Hello! <laughs> This is just every fictional story. Every single one. You heard of Attack on Titan ever? <laughs> it's like, really? You're gonna do the world of One Piece is broken? If anime was real, it turns out, it would kinda suck. Hoist your Jolly Rogers, loyal right, theorists. Right. We're set in sail. Hey, he did pirate lingo. He's cool again. So before we can really dive into why you wouldn't want to live in the world of One Piece, we have to break down just how different it is from our own. Zooming out, you can immediately spot some pretty big differences. First of all, almost the entire planet is covered in ocean, with some small island continents and archipelagos dotted here and there. On the real planet Earth, with all of our massive continents, about 70% of the planet's surface is water. So for the world of One Piece, we're talking closer to 90%. The biggest landmass right, right. is undoubtedly the Red Line, a very long, very skinny continent of red rocky mountain jutting out of the ocean, which Already. runs all True. along what's basically the prime meridian of the planet. Because there's one major mistake he's making here. There's one huge disaster like that destroys most of his theory, according to what somebody told me. So I'm going to let him cook for now. We're going to keep letting him cook until I bring up the thing that destroys most of the thing that he's saying. I and I don't even blame him. I don't I don't think he wrote this script, to be honest. Because of this, One Piece's oceans are split into five main bodies of water. The four biggest are the North, South, East, and West Blues, basically separated into the four hemispheres of the planet. But the fifth body of water is- That's not what a hemisphere means, Matt Pet. You have a PhD, and you don't know what the word hemisphere means? Hemisphere literally means half a sphere. Hemi is half in Latin. Actually the most important, the Grand Line, a wide ocean stream that wraps around the entire equator of the planet. This- Boom! You just heard the major mistake of the Matt Pat video. Are you prepared? Here, let me pull this up. Let me show you something that only a true One Piece fan actually knows. You see this map with the the north blue and the south the, the south blue and the west blue and the east blue. Notice how the north blue is in the top left and the south blue is in the top right. Well, that's weird. And this is the equator of the planet, the Grand Line. Well, are you prepared to hear something amazing? The compass on this map is not correct. You see, law specifically explains that the Grand Line is on an axis. It is not the equator. He literally says that in like chapter a thousand something. And the red line is not east-west or north-south. It's northeast-southwest. You see, the reason why this is called the north blue and this is the south blue is because the entire map is on has to be rotated 45 degrees. He's gonna start talking about how if this is equator, it's the hottest place in the world and, and it's difficult, but no, because it's supposed to be literally on an axis. This stretch of ocean is incredibly perilous and often called the most dangerous in the world. Normal compasses don't work here. Currents and weather are erratic and extreme and much of the wildlife is deadly. Dude, true. A lot of the currents in One Piece and a lot of the characters are pretty erotic. Very based of you, Matt Pet. There's a reason it's earned itself the nickname the Pirate's Graveyard. So other than that- Can you blame him for not knowing? I don't blame him for not knowing. I don't think he wrote the script. I blame whoever he hired this script to do this script for not knowing. Forbidding label on the Grand Line, what would the big issues of this planet actually be? Well, the first problem the world of One Piece would face actually comes from its most iconic feature, the fact that it's just covered in ocean water. See, this uh -huh. one fact would probably mean that the world's inhabitants don't have time to fight over who's gonna get the One Piece first because they're too busy fighting over another more essential resource, Food. one required to survive, water. Uh, uh fresh water. I'm sure I don't need to tell you, ocean water, not safe to drink. True. All that salt is not gonna give you a good time. In the real world, fresh water only makes up about 2.5% of the planet's total water supply. And amongst that already minuscule percentage, most of that is trapped in the atmosphere, in ice caps, or is so deep under Earth's surface that it won't see the light of day. The only water that's truly available for humans to consume are those found in underground aquifers or in freshwater lakes and rivers. I mean, here's a crazy fact for you. If all of Earth's water were shrunk down to the size of your typical water bottle, the amount that would be fresh and available would be about a quarter of a milliliter. That is literally less than a drop in a bucket. Now remember, all of these calculations are in relation to Earth, a planet that has 30% of its surface covered in land, land that has massive lakes and rivers, and even we- <laughs> I'm literally dying right now. 
<laughs> oh no! Oh my god. Still have freshwater shortages. Now, take away all the continents, the Great Lakes, the rivers, the streams, and replace it all with even more giant oceans full of undrinkable salt water. People are going oh to struggle. Sure, some islands. It's true, but you realize that the population, the world population in One Piece is way, way, way smaller. Islands in One Piece probably have fresh water. Obviously, real world islands like those in Hawaii have plenty of fresh groundwater reserves and local spring water. But though. This is funny. This is like regular Mad Pet, all right? It's like there's a lot more seawater. That means there's less fresh water. And if there's less fresh water, it means it's kind of shitty. Those can run dry. And pumping wells near coastlines put you at a massive risk of accidentally sucking up ocean water, contaminating your pool. I know someone that's accidentally been sucking up to the release of the big one piece. <laughs> Factor in the limited farmland available on the islands and you- But they have giants, Nux, so they drink more water and it evens out. Have you ever considered that maybe giants could drink salt water? They're giants, after all. Hmm. Well, maybe maybe they, they drink salt water instead. I don't know. Who suddenly created a world that's going to be forever in conflict, not over a piece of pirate treasure, but over a lack of food and water. The second major environmental problem you're going to run into in the world of One Piece is coming from its second most striking physical feature. Did you say is coming? The red line continent that basically cuts the planet in half. How so? Well, this is basically going to make a ton of the islands on the planet borderline impossible to live on. To explain what I mean, let's just take a look at this map of our very real world, specifically okay, the west coast of the United States. I'm you ever ready. notice how so much of the west coast is incredibly green, basically running from Canada yeah. all the way to central California? So Everything is covered in trees and wildlife. It's beautiful. And then there's almost a straight line where everything to the east becomes much more brown, full of deserts and dry grasslands. Why does it happen? Well, that straight line separating these two regions is the Cascade Mountain Range. See, there's basically a all permanent right, cool, breeze cool. flowing into North America from the Pacific Ocean cool, cool, until cool, cool. it reaches the Cascade. And, and is suddenly it. deflected up. That rapid upward movement forces the moisture carried by the wind to condensate, making a bunch of rain and creating an ecosystem that's fit for a bunch of plant growth. This is why cities in the Pacific Northwest are so famously rainy, and why the forests there are so abundant. But on the opposite side of the mountain range, you have the opposite effect. Since all the moisture was right, taken out of right. the air by the mountains, the ecosystems are much drier. I'm still not sure why this equates to the red line having more dry land. And hotter on the other side. The phenomenon is fittingly known as the rain shadow effect. Since the mountains are casting a metaphorical shadow where there's no rain on the far side of the range. So now let's apply very what cool, we just talked about cool. to the world of One Piece. Since the red line is basically a giant ring of incredibly tall mountains, it's going to cast an equally enormous rain shadow. Since the Grand Line ocean current travels from west to east, then we would expect the wind. See, this, this is that big mistake again, because the red line is not a vertical line. This red line needs to, you need to rotate it 45 degrees. The red line goes like this. It's the one mistake that he makes in this entire video that kind of throws most of his calculations out the window. In that western side of the red line mountain. It's not the western side because you, you're looking at the map like a dingus. This is the north. This quarter over here is the north. It should be up here. The red line goes like this. You have to rotate it 45 degrees and then you have zero questions. Mountain range, making the eastern side of the red lines devastatingly dry. Bro, it doesn't nuke the whole planet. God, bro. I'm like blown away a little bit here. The reason why, the reason why the United States, the mountain pass range stops the rainwater from the other side of the range is because there's no sea on the other side of the mountain for the sea to become the rainwater for the other side of the mountain range. It's literally land. So if you want to say that the red line is dry, then that's true. But here there's still currents, especially because the red line does not go that deep. We know that sea, uh, Fishman Island is directly below Marie Joie, which is here. I feel like there's a kind of a, not there. Listen, I'm, I'm not a genius at One Piece ge geography. One thing I am, though, is someone that knows that the north is not in the top left. And wouldn't you know it, but that's exactly where our intrepid straw hat heroes start their adventure. What? The first six arcs of One Piece's story take place in the East Blue, Blue Ocean and eventually end up at the Red Line. So if this planet were even somewhat realistic, every single island they visit at the beginning of the show would be an arid desert wasteland. God, totally, totally. No, it would not. What are you saying? When the current starts in the ocean, any place with an ocean will have a current. The reason why the other end of the mountains that you showed in the United States was dry was because there was no ocean! Where there just isn't a lot of water and rain for life to take hold. And hey, it gets even worse from there oh, when good. you take into account the next aspect of the world of One Piece, the Grand Line. Or rather, what's around the Grand Line. See, flanking above and below the Grand Line is a stretch of sea known as the Calm Belts. And while that might sound like it's gonna be smooth sailing, it actually creates a giant problem. The Calm Belts oh, here no. aren't just 
vast expanses of pleasant seas, they're completely still. And I mean completely still. In <laughs> but wait a second, water isn't completely still. <laughs> Crazy currents and unpredictable winds of the Grand Line, the calm belts have no wind to catch your sails, no currents to carry you along. And that right there would be outright disastrous, maybe even apocalyptic in a real life climate system. <laughs> if water and wind just flat out stopped, like it hit a brick wall at the calm belt, that means that the oceans in the northern and southern hemispheres aren't sharing any water. Similarly, since the Red Line continent is basically dividing the world in half, it means that the oceans oh in the west God, and eastern hemispheres are also not sharing water, besides a pathetic trickle that just gets through at the reverse mountain. Oh, basically, right. Each ocean in the world of One Piece is in its own entirely enclosed system. Why is that so bad? Temperature. Because the planet's a big ol' spheroid, the central part of the equator is- <laughs> Okay, true, true, true. I'm with you so far, I'm with you, but, but I'm waiting for him to explain why it's a problem. This is gonna be the wild part. Sees a whole lot more of the sun's heat compared to the poles. That's one of the big reasons that places like Central America, Central Africa, and Southeast Asia have such warm tropical climates. However, the currents running throughout our oceans oh, transport brother. the warmer waters from the equator down towards the poles, thereby are you, are you ready for the nuke? So if the Grand Line is the equator, the Grand Line is the hottest water in the world, and if it's the hottest water in the world, and it doesn't get through the cob belt, and it doesn't get through the thingy, then the hot water doesn't go to the rest of the world. Oh, no. Oh, wait. Turns out it's not actually so bad, thankfully. You know why? Because this is the north blue. And if you just rotate the whole thing 45 degrees, then technically this is the equator. And if this is the equator and, and the water then does mix to the rest of it. Oh, you're good increasing the overall temperature of those areas and making them more temperate and habitable for more creatures, including us humans. If you want a really good example of how this works, look no further than Europe. You ever notice how far oh, north God. Europe actually is on the map? Cities known for their warmer climates like Rome actually sit on the same latitude as more notoriously cold climates like Boston. Europe is able to maintain a warmer climate in part thanks to these ocean currents. So if those currents were to just somehow stop, large parts of Europe and North America would likely experience incredibly long periods of freezing conditions, devastating trade and agriculture in those areas. Now apply this to the world of One Piece. The warmer waters inside the Grand Line are essentially trapped inside the Grand Line. See, but the thing is, the water warmer, the, the warmer waters aren't actually the Grand Line. It's only one part of the Grand Line that's actually warm. They can't be distributed to the northern and southern parts of the world. That would, in essence, make those parts of the globe permanent Arctic waste, unfit for most habitation, let alone any tropical island pirate adventures. Now, all of this is awful, and if One Piece were anything remotely close to realistic, this paints a picture of a devastating hellscape. Basically, half the world would be desert, a lot of the northern and southern hemispheres would be frozen over, and there would be very few resources across the board to sustain any sort of population. The long and short of it, the world of One Piece is totally messed up. Not only would the way the world is built result in something completely unlivable for a huge percentage of the surface, but the natural phenomenon that we see coming from the Grand Line don't only make it dangerous for sailing, it also completely destroys any possibility of technological advancement on that planet. Things would basically be stuck at the technological level of the Industrial Revolution or just before, which okay. hey, when Okay, that kind of makes sense actually, because as you can see in the world of One Piece, they, they don't have supercomputers. There's no AI! But you know it, that's exactly what we're seeing. In One Piece, everyone is basically just sailing ships around. Engines of any sort are exceedingly rare, and any sort of transportation or technology usually comes from the use of the weird wildlife on the planet, or magical powers granted by the devil fruit. So in reality, when you look at it, for as scientifically inaccurate- What?! What technology was used from the weird wildlife of the planet? Where was there technology that was created by the magical powers of the devil fruit? Listen, I, I, I assume you didn't get to Egghead, but the Den Den Mushi is the wildlife and it became a phone? Is that supposed to be it? No, but like when you look at Frankie's machines, even as early as Water 7, you look at Frankie's machines, or you look at the pacifista robots, or you look at, at all the egghead stuff, none of that was actually used. None of that was the wildlife or devil fruits. I'll be honest, I don't think you watched One Piece. So in reality, when you look at it, for as scientifically inaccurate as this world is, the end result is largely what you're seeing on screen. A bunch of people leaving their resource-starved island in hunt of something better. Hi, diddle dee, -dee a pirate's life for me. But- ah! <laughs>
But hey, okay. that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. My man Mad Pat got the, the Linus Tech Tips writers for his video. That's just a theory. A wildly incorrect theory. And there was also no theory. What, there was, was there a theory? There wasn't a theory in this video. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me on this tale where I inevitably get roasted in the comment section because every time I disagree with anything Matt Pat says, people hate on me. Even though I have nothing against Matt Pat, I just think he never watched One Piece. I don't even blame him for making this video despite never watching One Piece. I was actually talking to Turkey Tom and uh, Muda about this. Matt Pat is literally the biggest video essay er on YouTube. I, I don't think how you realize how insane it is that he has four distinct channels, each one pumping out two video essays every single week. Hours and hours of content. Literally more than a full video essay a day. He obviously doesn't write all of it. He has a brilliant empire that he has built. And uh, that doesn't mean I have to think that this video is good at all, which it's not, so. Like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch. Stay weird, fam.